This is an audio-only recording supplementing my written review of the new Zoom M3 shotgun stereo microphone. I have it in uh, shotgun mode right now, though it is capable um, of recording in stereo, though that only gets worse in the ways that I'm going to demonstrate in this little audio recording. So um, the reason I'm doing it this way is because to make sure that you're getting a very raw and unadjusted uh, recording, I'm actually recording straight onto a micro SD card in the M3 so that you could make sure to get an uninhibited result. And spoiler alert, it's not good. So that's the whole point of this audio only recording uploaded to YouTube as a video. The first test I'm going to do is going to just test the shock mount that's built into the Zoom M3 because it is, after all, designed to be mounted onto a camera. I have it right now on a Sony FX30, but again, that's kind of irrelevant because you're getting the recording straight onto the micro SD card rather than through the analog stereo output going into any mic inputs recording onto the camera. So here we go. I'm just going to push a few buttons, not in an exaggerated way, but just to show you that the shock mount isolation really isn't very good. So I have a Rycoat mount that I use normally for something like this with a high quality Sennheiser shotgun mic. And uh, I just never get that kind of handling noise. So that's the first problem. But really the main thing that this recording is meant to do is to really expose an incredibly low level of RF shielding on this product that is bizarrely picking up on radio frequency waves from probably FM or AM broadcast radio. So um, I assure you I have no electronic products turned on in this studio. And yes, it is in downtown New York City, but that is on, honestly a fairly average and typical media production environment. So this product is um, picking up on all kinds of things that probably would happen in many places that uh, Zoom could have predicted. So here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around the room and end up at the place that tends to dwell around windows and pipes where um, the RF interference is, is transmitting the most. You're getting the actual noise, not from the microphone itself, but from RF interference. So here we go. So there you have it. Those were not sounds picked up by the microphone. They were literally just uh, radio frequency waves penetrating into the uh, chassis of this very light, all plastic, cheaply made product. And I just simply would conclude Zoom simply should not have brought this to market. It's just not ready for everyday situations. That's all for this.